When it comes to menswear, it is all about the tailoring. A poorly tailored suit can really ruin a look. But even more than tailoring, what makes menswear so great is in the details. We've touched on tailoring before on this series, but today we are getting a hands-on lesson from my good friend, Nathaniel Adams. He's a custom suit maker, as well as the author of I Am Dandy and We Are Dandy. And he's here today to show us how to tailor a modern suit to give it a vintage feel, as well as how to pinpoint those specific details details that can let us know what era a suit comes from when we're shopping vintage. How you doing, Natty? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have you here. You are a custom suit maker. Yeah. So what I do is I design and sell custom suits. I'm not a tailor myself. Uh -huh. I hire tailors and use workshops and, and other pattern makers, people who are better at that kind of stuff than I am. Yeah. Um, and I've been doing this, I've been in the business for about 10 years and I've had my own company for about two now. People come to you to kind of get suits that mimic a vintage style, correct? Quite often, yeah. I've done, a, a, that's partly because, you know, I'm an ex-punk and a, an ex-mod and all this kind of stuff. So my work, I think, is very, very informed by by vintage clothing. I think one thing that my customers value is the fact that I can use my knowledge of fashion history, my knowledge of vintage, to create something that's new and fresh, but with those elements. Like the suit you're wearing today. Right. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I had seen a photograph in a book about mods, and there's photographs of them from the 60s, and there's one guy riding a scooter, and he had what looks like a sort of striped boating blazer. Uh-huh. Um, and I thought, well, that would look great as a suit. And then I thought about what details go into a 60s suit. It's a bit short and jacket, mm -hmm. slim. It's three buttons. I usually only button the middle one. Oh, and to go over, what's the rule of thumb again? It's the... Oh, you're never supposed to button the bottom Yeah, jacket. the never. The bottom button. The, the sometimes and the always. What is it again? Oh, it's I've a, never heard that. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's, um, it's never bottom. Always think, middle. Always sometimes middle, top. sometimes yeah. top. That's okay, it. That makes sense. Bam, there you go. <laughs> the buttons on the sleeves here, the cuff, mm -hmm. cuff buttons, um, traditionally nowadays, it'll be four buttons pretty yeah. close together, or three. This was a style that was popular in the 60s, which is two buttons quite quite far spaced apart. Amazing. It's a detail that you'll, you really only see on suits from the 60s, or stuff that you know, has been made with that in mind. That's what I love because, you know, women's wear, of course, changes so much and has changed so much over the last 100 years. But when yeah. it comes to men's wear, what stayed classic is the men's suit. But it really comes down to all of those specific little details. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, a suit like what we have back here, yeah. this is obviously a very, very 70s suit. And we know that. But mm -hmm. how would you describe to somebody watching this, you know, yeah. if they saw this in a vintage store, yeah. how would they be able to say, oh, I know this is 70s because yeah. what would you say? I mean, most obvious thing right off the bat, the wide lapels. Yeah. Um, second, really big pattern repeat. Yes. That's like a that's like a big late 60s, early 70s kind of thing. It's really about the exaggerated mm -hmm. proportions back then. We also have some other blazers hiding behind the suits. Mm -hmm. If you were to find these in a vintage store, yeah. how would someone decipher what decade they're from? Both of these look like they're uh, probably late 50s, early 60s to me. I wouldn't say it's a dead giveaway all the time, but it's a strong hint yeah. that something is from before the 1960s usually, is if it's only half lined. In the first half of the 20th century, they didn't fully line a lot of suits, and that's partly because um, the fabrics were much heavier. Yeah. Now technology means that we can make incredibly lightweight wools, yeah. um, all sorts of things like that. So you, you can make a summer suit and have it fully lined. Back then, even something like this, which is a fall, you know, maybe early spring kind Definitely. of thing, you'd need to have this online, otherwise it would just, your back would be you know, sweating. You brought some suits that you've, an original suit that you made yeah. a copy of, right, for us? So sometimes when I'm shopping, I find something that's like perfect for me, that I love. Uh -huh. um, in this case, it was this ivory silk um, blazer sort of dinner jacket. Nice, um, 1980s. 1980s, um, but sort of that 80s does 40s kind of Humphrey Bogart thing. I know it's a double-breasted that buttons low. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty um, popular 80s and kind of 30s and 40s style. Yes, absolutely. So it doesn't, instead of buttoning up there, it buttons down there. Oh, so the buttons, the top buttons just for show. Top buttons just for show. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, which gives it this kind of drape. Yes. That makes it a little bit more. The kind of slouchy. Kind of yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that kind of thing. And so I bought this and I have worn it out and I've worn it to, you know, opera and formal occasions. And yes. It's, it's wonderful. But I thought I want to put my own spin on it. I took this and what I did was I decided I wanted to make a full suit. Amazing. And 
a full suit in raw dry silk like this is not a very good idea. So I made it out of white English gabardine. So it's it's a it's a light wool, but mm -hmm. it's a bit more durable than a pure silk. And then I did some details that make this a much more minimal minimalist suit. Things that would be kind of unheard of in the 40s or something. Yeah. So first of all, there's no buttonholes on the lapels. Okay. So yeah. It's completely clean. Yeah. Second of all, only two buttons in the front entirely. Most unusual thing I did about this, and sometimes I regret doing it, and sometimes I don't, oh. is that there's no breast pocket at all. Oh, okay. Which is something you might not notice until it's pointed out to you. One thing that I did do that's the same on both of these, uh -huh. and this is something that I really like for double-breasted jackets, and it's something that was very popular in uh, the 30s and 40s, is mm -hmm. there are no vents on the back. What that does is it gives it this kind of sheath look. Yeah. Um, and if you look at old videos of Clark Gable or Cary Grant, they've got these kind of very... This, these jackets that hug their, their hips and yeah. their seats. When I'm looking for inspiration, mm -hmm. I find it in the past, and then I find ways to update it so it's not just a copy. Oh, what would be some advice that you would give somebody who is maybe like wanting to have this done themselves? How would they dictate that to a tailor? Right. Most, I mean, I feel like most suit makers who are kind of know what they're doing should be able to look at photographs and spot the details and figure out how to tailor something that would fit you. Uh -huh. I've definitely had people come to me with vintage pieces they love that just don't fit them. Yeah. They're not the right size and it's a one of a kind vintage piece. So it's like, well, you know, I can never wear this, but I really want to. Can you make it in my size? Amazing. Oh, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's totally possible. You know, that's one of the nice things about custom. The history of fashion is this history of churning, reusing things, yes, bringing yeah, certain things back, cyclical. leaving certain things behind. I think for a lot of us uh, who work in the business, um, and particularly people like me who came out of youth subcultures and things like that, the way we learned how to dress was buying vintage clothing. Mm -hmm. And vintage clothing didn't always fit us. Yeah. And so we learned how to have vintage clothing tailored, tailored so that it would fit us. Yeah. So it's not just a matter of getting someone to reproduce or recreate a look. Mm -hmm. It's also a matter of when you buy a vintage piece, finding a competent good tailor who can get it to look right on you. This has been so much fun. Thank you so, so much for coming and talking to us about this. Thanks for having me. I've learned so much today. <laughs>